Now we're gonna set up our zombie spawners. So we can populate this world with way more zombies than we currently have because we just have this one lone zombie right here. Now, something happened in the recording of these tutorials where this zombie game object uh, got unpacked completely. So this is no longer a prefab for some reason. Not quite sure how this happened, but it's not a big deal because thankfully we have been designing our zombie to function as a prefab and not as a scene object. So all I'm gonna do to be safe is I'm coming here to our prefabs folder, zombie folder, and our zombie prefab. I'm gonna rename it old zombie. And that's just kind of like a backup, just in case something happens. It's a good habit to sort of keep backups of things instead of completely overriding them. It's something that saved me a ton of times because sometimes you wanna go back to old systems or just see versions for reference. Okay, so with our old zombie there, we can now drag and drop this scene object zombie in here, which creates a new prefab just called zombie. That's what we want. We actually don't want any zombies in the scene. So I'm gonna remove that zombie prefab from the scene. We just have our prefab in here now. And now what I'm gonna do is right click in our hierarchy, create empty. I'm gonna call this game manager. Having a game manager game object is a great way to oversee all of the systems to kind of create the interconnectedness between things like the player and the NPCs and other such world systems. And the first thing that we're going to put in our game manager is an FSM that we can call zombie manager. Now in here we have our zombie manager and as a child of our game manager game object we're going to create another empty and this is going to be called currently spawned zombies and this is exactly what it sounds like this will be the game object that we put all of our currently spawned zombies into that way whenever the player loses or the game resets in any sort of way what we could do is just destroy this currently spawned zombies game object which would in turn destroy all of the zombies that are connected to it and then we'll just create a new game object called currently spawned zombies to repeat that whole process so in game manager, we're going to put a set game object and we're going to create this new variable currently spawned zombies. And I'm just going to drag and drop this currently spawned zombies game object in here. Okay, we're going to call this state init for initialize, add a finished event, go on to the next state. And in this next state, we'll call it loop spawns. And here's where we're gonna select all of the spawn points to spawn zombies. So what we can do is come over to Game Manager, right click on it, create empty, and call this zombie idle spawns. And in here, I'm gonna right click on it, create empty, and call this an idle spawn. So we could see it is just sitting right here, but I'm gonna move it down to like right about here, just sitting above the floor. And what I wanna do is set up multiple idle spawns around the world as areas in which our zombies will be spawning in. So for example, I'm gonna put one just up ahead right here. And the way we're gonna program it is it's gonna get the position of this spawn and then say, put a zombie within a certain radius of this, or put a few zombies within a certain radius of this. So we don't have to put spawns in every single spot that we want a zombie to spawn in. Instead, we could just put it in the general area that we want zombies to spawn in. So with this idle spawn selected, I'm gonna hit Control D on Windows, or if you're on a Mac, you can hit Command D, and that'll duplicate it. And I'm just gonna move this one to right here, duplicate that one, put it like right here and duplicate this. And I'm just gonna put these around in areas that I want our zombies to spawn in, just to have the area nice and populated. And just remember that wherever you're putting your spawners, there needs to be a nav mesh below it because when you spawn your zombie into the world, it's gonna need a nav mesh to snap to. So what I'm gonna do is collapse this. This has all of our idle spawns in it. Now in our game manager, our zombie manager, come over here to the loop spawn state. We're gonna put in a get next child, okay? And we're gonna get the next child of our zombie idle spawn. So this is a way of looping through all of these spawns from this game object. 
Okay, so we're looping through there. When you enter the state, it's gonna run this action once and it'll get the first child inside of this zombie idle spawn, which will be this one. And then it's gonna store it in a new variable that we can just call idle spawn. And we're gonna have a loop event that we'll just call loop event. And we'll have a finished event that will just be next. Okay, next gonna fire off down here, which is just complete. And loop event will fire off over here, which is where we will actually spawn zombies. So what's happening here is it's gonna get that child, it's gonna store it in this spawn. It'll keep looping through there, which means it'll send off to this spawn zombie state. Then we'll do some stuff, send it back here, and it'll keep looping through until it's gone through all of them, at which point it'll come down here to complete. So in our spawn zombie state, we're gonna get position and we're getting the position of our idle spawn and we're gonna store that vector three, new variable called spawn underscore v3. And then we're gonna get a couple of random floats and what we're gonna do with these floats is we're gonna add it to the position of this random idle spawn game object as a way of getting a random point. So for example, if I select this spawn, if I find it in the scene right now, we're gonna get the vector three of it, which is a coordinate that leads right here to this little center point. And then we're gonna add a couple of random floats that will be between say negative six and six, and it'll add to the vector three. So, so a way to imagine that happening is with this idle spawn selected, tells you the position up here, right? Negative 2.47, negative 2.458, and 5.96. Now, if you did a couple of random floats and then added it to this vector three, you can see that that z-axis is changing, right? So if you added some to that, right? If it was 10.7 instead of 5.96, it's kind of like adding five to it. Or if you worked in the other direction, if you added a negative five to that, it would push it down back over here. Similarly, you could work on this other axis, right? The X axis. So we're gonna be adding it to the X and the Z axis of this spawn point. And that way, we get a new position that is randomly placed within a certain range of this. And that's how we're gonna be spawning zombies in a random position within this little radius. So over here, let's set our distance to about six units. So it'll be between a minimum of negative six and a maximum of six. And we'll have the same thing over here. Okay, so we'll store this first result in a variable called random x. And then this next one, random z. And then we'll get a vector three add xyz. And we're gonna be getting that spawn v3, the one that we get from up here. And we're gonna be adding in the x and the z, the variables, random x and random z. Now, what I said a moment ago about needing to put our spawn points on a nav mesh, there's a way we can account for times where the random position might fall just shy of being on the nav mesh. It might fall off of it a little bit. And the way we can account for that is by using a nav mesh sample position. We'll put that on here. And what a nav mesh sample position does is it gets the position that you're feeding it. So the source position will be our spawn v3. And what it'll do is give you a position on the nav mesh that is closest to this. So if that position is on the nav mesh, it'll just spit out the same coordinate. But if it's off of the nav mesh, it'll give you a coordinate that is on the nav mesh, which is as close as it possibly can be to the original one. So where that new value gets stored is here, and we can just overwrite the original value of spawn v3. So this action is just a way of ensuring that whatever gets added up over here is for sure on a nav mesh. And now to actually create the zombie, we'll have a create object action. Okay, I'm putting this at the end here. And we're gonna be dragging in our zombie prefab. So it's gonna be creating one of those. And the parent that it's gonna be parented to is that currently spawned zombies game object. So it'll be put into this game object. 
And the position that we want to spawn it at will be our spawn v3. This is the random position that we just cooked up up here. And just to keep track of the zombie that we just created, we can store that zombie in a new variable called zombie added. And then we'll have an int add. And we'll have a new int variable called number of zombies. And we'll just add one. So every time it comes to the state, it's going to create this zombie, put them inside of this currently spawned zombies game object. It's going to make sure that they spawn at a random position next to whatever random spawn point we have. It'll remember them as the last zombie added. And then we're going to be adding one to this int variable number of zombies. So this is a way to keep track of how many zombies we have. And then finally, we're going to add in a loop action at the very end here. And we're going to loop through this, say, about five times. And our loop event is going to be loop event. And finished event will be next. So loop event will send to itself. So we're spawning five zombies for every random spawn point that we have. They'll each be put at their own random position near that spawn point. And then once it does create five zombies for that one spawn point, it's going to send back here to get the next spawn point. And then it'll do that all over again, five more for the next one. And then once it's gone through all of those spawn points, it'll finish down here. Okay, so I got to do a quick run through of this level really quick to set up the nav mesh because I believe AI navigation, that's right, I still haven't added all this nav mesh. So I'm going to do that really quick and then we'll come right back to test out this zombie spawning situation. All right, now that the nav mesh is all set up, I'm gonna try running this zombie spawner. Let's see how this plays out. Nice, there we go. Lots of zombies. Look at all those zombies. Just waiting to kill. Let's, let's give them a, a test spin. Oh, oh, did you see me? Uh-oh, uh-oh, you saw me? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, spliz. All right. Look at all these zombies. Oh, and was totally overtaken. All right, so the problem now is when I spawn, all of them are still over there. Look at, now they're coming for me again. That is just the last thing you wanna see. Um, so what we need to do is have it so they all get reset and they're all just standing there again. The world needs to reset, not just the player. So what we'll do is set this up so all of the zombies that get spawned in here, the currently spawned zombies, will get destroyed. So watch this game object. When I hit play, it's gonna get populated with all of our zombies. Right, so now this has a little drop down menu and these are all our zombies. Okay, so all of them are inside of this thing. So if we destroy this thing, all of our zombies go with it. So we can set things up so whenever we lose or die, whatever happens, we just delete this and then create another one of these for the next round for a fresh batch of zombies. So the way we have that set up is by creating a new state that we can call game over. And we'll create a new event called game over. I'm gonna hit this global checkbox to make it a global event. And we're gonna have that global transition game over. And it'll do some things in here, a lot of finished event. And after it does some things, it'll send back to the loop spawns. So the first thing that we're going to want to do here in our game over state is destroy object. And the object we want to destroy is our currently spawned zombies game object. And then we want to create a new game object. And we're going to call it the same thing that we called this. Currently spawned zombies. 
and its parent will be our game manager. So it gets parented right underneath it, just how this one's already set up. Spawn point doesn't matter, but we will store the object as our currently spawned zombies game object. Instead of having an event get sent here directly from when our player dies, say from the player death, or even from the player health in this restart state, instead we'll have the player lost restart state send an event to a new FSM that'll control all of the sort of restart values in the game. So what we'll do here is add a send event at the bottom here and game object FSM, it'll be sending to our game manager and it'll be in a new FSM that we'll call info. And I'm gonna copy that, it's a capital I. And the event it'll send to our info FSM will be game over. Okay, so now in our game manager, we'll add a new FSM and it'll be called info, spelled the same way. Now I'm gonna hit edit and inside of here, we'll create a couple new states. Okay, so for this first state, this will just be an initialization state. The second state will be game over. And this last state, we'll even call this win. Okay, so this will be game over red and this win state will be green. And for this, we'll add a global transition, custom events, game over. And we may as well just add an event called win add it to globals and put that in here too. We'll take care of this later, but this is pretty much what our game manager info FSM is gonna look like. So in our game over state, here is where we'll have a send event that tells the game manager zombie manager to go to game over, okay? Because there's gonna be a couple other things that we want to tell that it's game over in here, but we're not quite there yet. So zombie manager is first on those list of things. And now that that's set up, let's take a look at what happens when we run this game and lose. Let's keep our eye on zombie manager. Let's run it. Okay, gonna get their attention. Hey y'all, come get me. All right, down for the count, fading out, and now I get reset, and so do they. We have a new one. This new cheerleader zombie is chasing after me, but the people that were attacking me before are gone. And you'll even see, if I press pause, that it sent over to our game over state once. This little counter here said that it entered the state and it ran these actions. And if we go over to our info, you'll see that same thing happened here. It actually went to the game over state. It's about to get fired off again because we just died. So let's see what happens right now. And cheerleader disappeared. Now we have this teacher chasing us. So that all works now. We have a game that properly resets our position and resets our health and resets all the zombies in the world. Even in the scene over here, you should see this. Yep, you see that? All those zombies just kind of swapped out. Nice.